Here's the mail, it never fails, it makes me want to wag my tail. When it comes, I want to wail. Mail! Today we're going to be talking about <laughs> mail time, everybody. Uh, this is Press Any Button. I'm Nikki. I'm Eric. And I'm Brittany. <gasps> Brittany, my Yay! bestie. She's here, and I'm so happy. That's me. All right, so... Today we're talking about mail time. Yeah. So what's mail time, Nikki? Mail time is a cottage core adventure game developed by Apple Moe's Games, published by Freedom Games, and released in 2023 for Windows, Mac, PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, and Nintendo Switch. You're a fresh on the job mail scout on track to complete your very first mail delivery. You glide around, jump around, and walk around Grumblewood Grove on the way to deliver the letter and become a full-fledged male scout. Nice. Yeah. And Brittany, did you realize it was the Cottage Core game when you picked it out? Well, I did. I actually saw a girl on TikTok do a video about like cozy games that were coming out. And I saw this one and I thought, oh my gosh, it looks so cute. It's all Cottage Corey and you get to be like a little fairy jumping around and delivering your letters. And so I sent it to Nikki because I thought yeah. it was something that she would be interested in. It's cool. lo- it's really cute. It has a like, cool art style too. So that mm-hmm. was like made me want to play it. Me too. Also. Yeah. yeah, I just think it's kind of funny because your other choice you were kind of thinking about was Paperboy. It was. So yeah. between Paperboy and Mail Time. Yeah, something about delivering stuff is like the games I like to play. I want to <laughs> deliver your packages in your mail, evidently. But yeah, I played that a lot as a kid and wanted to do that for the podcast. But then I saw this one and it kind of made me think of that. So, Brandy, were you secretly meant to be a, a post office person? I think so. <laughs> Instead of a I teacher. Think, I think I just really want to drive on the other side of the car. That's really <laughs> what I wanted to with my life. I could just Second go to career. London. Yeah. yeah. That's what it is. <laughs> Love it. Nice. All right. Well, are you ready to get into the history? Sure. Yeah, let's yes. do it. pretty brand new game it's only been out for a few months now so were you able to find that much info i was able to find some stuff but yeah it's because it's pretty new and normally you know i just go to wikipedia and there's not even a wikipedia for this uh, game yet (laughs) so new there's not even a wikipedia page yet there might be after this though yeah i don't know so i did find some stuff but you know it's also a little bit limited so Maybe a, sh- a bit shorter history than normal. <laughs> well, I mean, the game was only like two hours long. So, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, how long can the history be? Yeah, that's true. All right. So the main person behind Mail Time is Kayla Vanderdeel, who did the coding game design, a bunch of the art for the game, and most importantly, all the boring paperwork stuff. <laughs> <laughs> that is very important. Can you guess what country uh, she's from based on her name alone? Denmark? Close. Germany? No. Mm -hmm. Sweden. The Netherlands. Oh, Oh, okay. Around there. I should have, yeah. (laughs) That would have been my next guess for sure. Pretty close. So Kayla graduated William de Kooning Academy Rotterdam with a degree in animation and a minor in game design and development in 2021. Ooh, she's fresh out of college. Mm -hmm. And that same year is when she founded her company, Apple Moe's Games, which is basically just her. Girl power, though. I love it. That's awesome. That's brave, like getting right out of school, saying, I'm not going to go work for another company. I'm just going to make my own game. And look, she did it. (laughs) So Mail Time basically started off as her college graduation project. And she actually won an award for it from her college called the Threshold Social Practices Award. Cool. That's, uh, that's cool. a weird name for an award. I <laughs> probably could have looked up some information about that <laughs> award, but you're I did just, not. You're in cozy yeah. mode, Eric. Yeah. You're like, I'm not doing extra it's work. Fine. This is it's just the game. It's cozy. So then you're in cozy mode when you're yeah. researching. So what would you guys say was the overall theme of the game, if you had to guess? Um, don't give up failure is a part of life yeah yeah actually you are spot on Mm -hmm. yeah so when asked kayla replied that the game is about trying your best and especially about dealing with failure we all fail sometimes which is inevitable since nobody can succeed all the time 
For every winner, there needs to be a loser. And in society, we have established the norm that good people should always succeed, but that's just impossible. So I wanted to design a game that addresses this struggle and allows players to explore their fear of failing. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's, and that's, I mean, when you get to the end of the game and you go through and you're, can I talk about that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Um, Spoiler alert. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> when you get to the end and there's like the little party with all the characters, that's what a lot of their dialogue talks about is that mm-hmm. it's okay that you failed. Like that's part of being a person. So yeah. It's, it's like you may have failed on this one aspect, mm-hmm. but look at all this other stuff. Look at all did. the other things you achieved and you accomplished, even though you didn't technically accomplish what you set out to yeah yeah and hey and you can try again yeah. yeah and hey it's your first day <laughs> you yeah. know it's your yeah. first day you really did a lot right. in your Give first yourself day some yeah. Slack. yeah after graduating college she signed with indie publisher freedom games which helped kayla with funding for her game i think freedom games is out of, out of alabama by the way Alabama, the United, United States? Is there, yeah. like there's another, is there another Alabama? Like, I, hope you're I, at first. I might cut that <laughs> if that great. ends up not being true. <laughs> <laughs> All right. If so, I re- that's great, though. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. So there was a Kickstarter in 2022 for the game with a set goal of raising $20,000. Mm-hmm. How much do you think the game managed to raise? All of it. Yeah. Did they They, they definitely exceeded that. I remember yeah. looking that, and I can't remember the number, but I remember like seeing that they like 50, super exceeded yeah, that. Yeah, it was like 48,000 or something. Yeah. Yeah, it's almost spot on, yeah. Dang, that's yeah. that's hard to raise that amount of money. Yeah. yeah. I feel like if I, Especially, well, I didn't go to school or anything, but if I put it out there like, hey, I want to make a video game, I need $20,000. <laughs> I might get like $200. And it'd probably be from dad. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, it would be. Eric's mom. (laughs) She probably would do that, yeah. Oh my gosh, she'd be your biggest fan. I love it. So these are the tools Kayla used to develop her game. Unreal Engine 4 for the programming environment, Autodesk Maya for the 3D modeling, 3D Coat for texturing, and Adobe Photoshop for the concept art. And then Google Docs for writing up some of the writing and stuff. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Are those like pretty basic programs? I don't know very much about like I only know some gaming of the ones things. You mentioned. I mean, I've done. I mean, I know Photoshop, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> Both those things are extremely like hard and mm-hmm. technical, so it's really freaking impressive. Yeah. Yeah. So Kayla did have some help making the game with writing from Blue Vanderdeel and Maya Bloom, additional 3D art from Misha Penders, music from Gina Laughlin, and sound design by Amerlin Zita. So I couldn't find like much info about how many copies were sold or anything like that. But I will note that it has mostly positive reviews from Steam with a user rating of about 80%. Cool. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've been like seeing it pop up on TikTok. I don't know if it's just because I watched like a couple videos about it. (laughs) But like a lot of people are playing it on Mm -hmm. there and making videos and stuff. Cool. So yeah, I think it maybe found some non-mainstream fame just kind of through the social media platforms perhaps. yeah i think like cozy games too are just trending upward because mm-hmm. it's more accessible to everybody yeah and yeah. even if you like high action games like cozy games are still fun mm-hmm. but i've noticed like more people talking about cozy games recently where like I didn't even know that was a genre when I was <laughs> I didn't either in until high I school and that stuff. Until yeah. I saw that one like TikTok. I didn't really think about cozy games, mm-hmm. but for someone like me who doesn't play games very often, it's something that I was like, oh, I can do that, and that's not going to. I, I don't have a uh, good gaming stamina. Mm-hmm. Like if I can't beat something, I kind of quit <laughs> yeah. it. And yeah. so this one, I was like, okay, well, this is something I can just kind of play casually and yeah, chill. relax, yeah. and yeah, yeah, have when, a coffee, have sure. a tea. When I think of like other cozy games, I tend to think of Animal Crossing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Really popular one, yeah. like The Sims. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Stardew Valley. That's one I hear about all the yeah. time. Yeah. Yeah. That's a really good one, too. Yeah. But yeah, those are Disney Dreamlight Valley. That's a good <laughs> one, too. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Those are some <laughs> yeah. great games. So there's definitely some quality there. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, so that's pretty much my history. Okay. That's what I could find. Cool. Good job, Eric. Awesome. <laughs> um, do you guys want to hear some fun facts? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I managed to find three. Nice. Perfect. I can't wait to hear them. So fun fact number one, the name of Kayla's company, Apple Moe's, is Dutch for applesauce. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. Oh. Wow. Okay. Such, so different. I would have never guessed. <laughs> Start, starting off very basic here. <laughs> I wonder why she chose that. It's like she just thought it was cute or something. Uh, Applesauce. I don't know. Yeah. It's cute. 
I like it. <laughs> that fits with the aesthetic of this game. Yeah. Oh, cutesy. Okay, so fun fact number two, making mail time accessible and playable for those with disabilities was an important goal for Kayla. So in the accessibility section of MailTime's website, you can find like a long checklist that Kayla used kind of as a guide Mm -hmm. and whether Kayla was able to implement that item into the game. So of the 121 guidelines, she was able to implement 62 of them into the game with some of the guidelines not being applicable due to the game type or feasible due to her budget. But Mm -hmm. she really did try to like implement a lot of these accessibility features into the game. I don't know if you guys uh, noticed that much. I did notice because I was looking through like the settings and stuff. I forgot what I was looking for, but I noticed there's like a whole accessibility like section and there was just like a ton of stuff and I was like, that's really cool. Yeah. yeah, I actually didn't notice that. I kind of want to go back and see what's there now. Yeah. I didn't see that. So that's cool. It's already pretty accessible just because like at least if you're deaf, like all mm-hmm. the dialogue yeah. is written out for yeah. you. There's not much that you have <clears throat> to actually hear. Mm-hmm. like or anything really other than the music so that's yeah nice. and i think i saw something about color blindness and mm-hmm. stuff on there mm-hmm. so um yeah yeah it was pretty cool yeah i thought that was really cool that she mm-hmm. went the extra mile to try to give and everyone access to it she tries to make this like inclusive for lots of different people too yeah. like mm-hmm. when you're creating your characters and your pronouns and things so that's good that she's keeping lots of different people in mind when she's making your game yeah oh cool all right so fun fact number three Kayla stated in an FAQ that the game takes about three to four hours to complete. How long do you think the current any percent speed run world record of the game is? Any percent? That that's like like, um, five minutes. So do you know what an any percent (laughs) speed run is? I don't know what that is. So any percent is basically how long to get to the very like the end. No matter how many things you accomplish. So for this game, it'd be like who can deliver their letter to Greg the fastest. The fastest. The fastest. Okay. Because. There's no requirements that you have to do anything yeah. else if you find mm-hmm. him. Yeah, you know? other speed runs might mm-hmm. include like different amounts. Like I think there's a 14 badges speed run where you have to go through and oh, get okay. specifically the correct number of badges, but not in the any percent. <laughs> yeah. So how long do you think it is? All right, so you do have to get like 14 badges before you can before Jim will open mm-hmm. up his thing, right? So yes. I'll say I don't know, like 15 minutes. Yeah. 15, 20 minutes, maybe? 15 minutes. Yeah. Okay, you are both way too long. (laughs) Five minutes? It's one minute and 38 seconds. One minute? Wait, how are you getting the... (laughs) How are you getting the 14 badges in that that fast? Uh, No, they're not getting the badges. They're just going straight to Greg. Okay, but how are they getting over there, though? He says that you have to, like... Yeah, it says that you have to finish some more of your deliveries before you Well, Jim just opens up the air thing. If you don't need to get to the air thing, if you can get up there without it, hmm. the air vent. What a yeah. significant so number a to way, play this game in There's one a minute. way to get past Jim. You don't really even need to talk to Jim to get to Greg. I will say I, I did watch the speed run, and it involves doing these warps using <laughs> your, notepad, your notebook. What? What? <laughs> Uh, I was trying I'm to look to up. Watch this. I was I trying to look up how you did those warps, but I literally couldn't find it. I think it's only for the Steam version of the game. Um, most likely. I too. wonder how long it would be though for like a no cheat. <laughs> Any oh, percent. So you're talking <laughs> like, glitchless. Yeah, yeah, that would be yeah, a glitchless. Yeah. That, that's why there's. That's a what I was thinking. That's I did what like I was as thinking. soon as I beat it, I started playing it again because I was like, now I know where everybody is, and I'm going <laughs> to see how fast I can go, and I haven't finished it yet, but. <laughs> Because I got distracted. But I, yeah. that's one of my goals is to play it again, just see how fast I can get to the end now that I know where all the characters do are. It, yeah. I'm gonna. It. <laughs> all right. Yeah. So that's my fun facts. Cool. cool. Yeah. Good job, Eric. Yeah. Yeah. We can talk about the story a little yeah. bit. Yeah. Do you have just anything? Just like re- a brief overview. I don't think we need to go into all this, the side stories and stuff. That and that's things, a lot but, of side stories yeah yeah so if we want to just go into the story just a little bit because you know that's like the main meat of the game so we don't want to sure. like ruin it too much if people want to play but you play as a male scout and it's your very first day on the job and your very first assignment is like to deliver a letter to greg and so once you deliver that letter to Greg, you beat the game, and that's all there was to it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> well, you get to Jim, and Jim is like, oh, yeah, I know Greg, but I'm not going to let you over there until you go get some patches. Yeah, yeah. you got to earn this. I'm just kidding, but yeah, you just go around this little cute little mm-hmm. forest town. 
deliver little letters to people and then like other people will give you letters to take to other yeah, people just and getting then, everyone's yeah. business and yeah, yeah. every oh, time yeah. you meet a character they've got a little side mission for yeah. you or a side thing to deliver and so then you get kind of off track yeah. with with and you're like oh yeah i'm supposed to be finding greg you're really just like getting all the tea from everyone because yeah, like percent. everyone tells you they're mm-hmm. <laughs> they're like hot goss yes and like who they're into or like if the you know it's their anniversary mm-hmm. or like whatever i think it's really cute it is cute and you can you know different characters have crushes on other characters mm-hmm. and you go and find out if <laughs> they have similar feelings and report back and for you some, to play like yeah. matchmaker yeah. for some reason no one's into you though uh, no <laughs> it's fine no, all, I'm, I'm kidding you know it's, it's still all good yeah <laughs> but yeah that's pretty much the gist mm-hmm. of it yeah and so then at the end of the game you you fail yeah you end up not yeah. being able to deliver the letter to greg which i yeah. will say like I didn't really see that coming. I didn't see that and coming And so then either. when I got there, I was like, yes, I found Greg. And then I was like, oh. <laughs> I thought Greg oh. would wake up. I did too. Well, look, Greg's yeah. a bear, spoiler, mm-hmm. uh, and he's in hibernation. So yes. when you find him, he's super conked out. Yeah. <laughs> And then you're, it's like, oh, okay, go on back to the village as soon as you find him. Yeah. <laughs> at the end, then it's like, oh, what? I don't get to give him his letter. You don't actually Greg's get to letter. give him his letter. Which, when you get to the end and you see all the characters and you read the dialogue, it makes sense that that is part of the theme mm-hmm. of the game. But at yeah. first, I was kind of like, what the hell? <laughs> I, got, I finally found him and now I can't even give him his letter. Yeah. Come but on, Greg. It made sense in the end. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's like, finally going to find out what's in this damn letter. I know. It's like, nope. And they're like, oh, we'll just try again in the spring when he's awake. I'm like, okay. Hopefully it's not important. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) So do we want to talk about the stuff that we liked about the game now? Sure. Sure, yeah. So I liked a lot about this game. I really loved the aesthetic of it, which is what drew me to it in the first place. I loved the animation and the colors and the music. And that's really what kind of drew me to it at Mm -hmm. first was just how cute and like aesthetically pleasing it was the art style kind of feels like you're reading a kid's storybook yeah and then like the character like the main character kind of has like this strawberry shortcake vibe very much so she's Uh, like you know you know being a child of the (laughs) 90s and 2000s like fairies and stuff were cool and so (laughs) it made me think of that like as a kid of me and my best friend like we used to love fairies and draw fairy stuff and strawberry shortcake and Stuff like that. So it gave me that kind of vibe, and I think that's what I liked about it. Mm-hmm. And I liked, which sounds weird, but I liked that all the colors are kind of muted and soft, and mm-hmm. like it's not neon and like really bright. I, yeah. I like that about it, though. It like adds to the cozy. Yeah, the cozy and woodlandiness of it. Mm-hmm. So yeah, a lot of like natural colors. Yeah, you know, browns and mm-hmm. greens and stuff. Yeah. I like that stuff too. Yeah, I had that listed as one of my positives too. Just like the art design in general is just very mm-hmm. cohesive like everything feels like it fits into this yeah. world yeah mm-hmm. definitely i liked how you can customize all your characters and and yeah. like we said earlier how inclusive it is and like there's like i, I think i want to say i might be wrong there's like f- four million different ways that you could customize your character it was <laughs> yeah. something ridiculous like that yeah. when i was looking up stuff about the game too which the, yeah and the main cool thing that i noticed that they had like you know she her he him mm-hmm. and they had they them as an option mm-hmm. which i thought was really cool yeah so you could just make it look however you yeah. want yeah and like nothing is locked to a particular gender or anything so you can have any mm-hmm. like style you, you want yeah yeah it wasn't like overwhelming amount of options though because i've no customized yeah. some characters where it's like taking me four mm-hmm. hours yeah. to, to customize yeah. my character oh yeah so it was, i think it was like a good balance of having some good options but not making it like overwhelming yeah sometimes it can be really fun to play with a character customization tool that gives you just way too many options mm-hmm. but it is kind of like overwhelming and it definitely <laughs> mm-hmm. It can be time consuming. But I like sure. too that if I go back and play it again, I could completely change everything ab- about my character. Yeah. And, yeah. And, but you're right. And it's not overwhelming, an overwhelming amount of choices. And didn't so. you say that Ella helped you create yes. your oh, character? Nice. She did. My, um, my four year old helped me. And actually, when you name your character, I named her Eleanor. So oh. then every time the dialogue would pop, pop up, it'd be like, hello, Eleanor. And she loved that. So, <laughs> oh, yeah. Did, yeah. Did she uh, play the game at all? Or did she, she mostly just watch she it? She sat with me and watched and played, or, like with me. She'd tell me, like, to go over here and to go talk to this person. She liked Shelly, mm-hmm. the, uh, 
turtle. Uh, Shelby. <laughs> or Shelby. Sorry, yeah, Shelby. Yeah, how can you forget Shelby? I know. I can't we have mess a friend named Shelby. Shelby. My bad. Something I like is the funny writing, the, the dialogue. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. all the characters had little jokes, and they mm-hmm. all had, like, really different personalities. And, like, I was just giggling the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> I had that written down, too. The humor was what, something I really enjoyed. Yeah. And I was, like, laughing out loud while playing the game a lot of times. All and right. then, like, the characters are just, like, silly too like the cat that's like yeah. into the money and everything yeah. and like the woodpecker that's like mm-hmm. playing his music and he's just trying to vibe yeah <laughs> all right so uh what was your favorite character you'd say i liked socks oh the, I, yeah i, I love socks, socks. i like so him i did like you know him he's too. just like mm-hmm. eating his chartreuterie and i'm like i relate you know <laughs> <laughs> I also liked what was Boomstick, the little, um, the like mole that likes to blow stuff up. Oh, yeah. Oh, um, swamp. Swamp. Yeah. What's yes. his name? Like Boomstick. <laughs> Boomst- no. I think that was his whole name, Boomstick Swamp. Oh. Like, um, was it? I think so. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. I feel bad for correcting you on that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they call him just Swamp on swamp. his dialogue yeah. thing, but when you talk to him, he's like, he says his first name. So, oh, okay. Yeah. Wow. You were paying attention. <laughs> Did you guys notice the worm that popped up randomly throughout the different worlds? I was convinced that that was going to be Greg for a while. (laughs) I bet that's freaking Greg. Greg. He's just spying on me. You're like, this game thinks it's so smart. I know. I see you, Greg. (laughs) But it wasn't Greg. (laughs) You guys meet uh, he who controls the worms? That's like the guy in the whale, right? Yeah. Did you ever talk to the guy in the whale? in the whale i'm trying to remember yeah like not. if you go to the whale where it's like boarded up over the whale oh it's like the, a little guy yes, inside yes 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 yes. <laughs> yes and i kept going back to him thinking something else he was gonna say something else and never did. <laughs> he never did you never <laughs> needed any mail nope, delivered that's unfortunately it. <laughs> was something you like eric i really like the music i thought that it really went well with the theme of the game yeah, same. Yeah, very light and yeah. Kind of uh, whimsy. Whim- whimsical mm-hmm. would be the right word. Yeah. I tried to capture as much as that as I could in my rap beat. Normally, I kind of use like a pre-written composition, but I couldn't really find one for this game. So I just kind of like did my best guess. <laughs> I thought it sounded pretty like mm-hmm. on theme. Yeah. I like too that it was like all one level and not like you had to beat certain levels to get to the next part. (laughs) Yeah. I think that made like for someone who doesn't play a lot of games, it made it a lot like easier. Yeah. Yeah. It kind of felt open world ish, but like maybe not too open world where it's just like you have too much area to roam around. Yeah. Cause it doesn't give you a map. So you kind of have to memorize where everything is. Mm -hmm. So like it can't really be too big. So I thought it was a good size Mm -hmm. map. Yeah, I felt, honestly, if the world was much bigger, I felt like it probably would have needed a map, but... I almost felt like it did. That was one <laughs> yeah. of the things, like, you know, when, when we talk yeah, about Yeah, we'll some... talk about that later. Yeah. <laughs> I like how uh, accessible the game is, not just for just different, you know, disabilities and learning um, things, but also for different genders, different sexual orientations, Mm -hmm. all ages as well. And I feel like you could definitely play this with your kids. Yeah, definitely. You saw something, you'd have to stop playing once your kid came in the room, and they could even play with you. Mm -hmm. And I think this game could be a really good game to get your kid to read, too. Like, if you're you're having trouble, I mean, you're a teacher, you'll know more than me. (laughs) But I feel like it's probably hard to get kids to read. So if you can find... Mm -hmm a way to kind of like sneak it in (laughs) yeah and like part of the charm of the game is the narrative and the story behind it but what i do like too is if you don't want to sit and read every teeny tiny bit of dialogue you don't have to yeah like you can still play it even if you don't do that Mm -hmm. if you know for kids absolutely that would be great i'm going to use that in my classroom (laughs) thanks nikki um but you don't have to read every teeny tiny bit of dialogue to be successful in the game which i like too yeah yeah. But I do feel like for this game, because it is so short, you really want to read the yeah. stories because that's yeah. what you're that's really the, paying for. Yeah, that's that's what you're paying for, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good point. So I'm always like super impressed by developers who are able to create games mostly by themselves. Yeah. Um, there's a ton of stuff going on behind the scenes, and it just takes a lot of effort, like creating those models and debugging and stuff. Yeah. And it's not always apparent, even if a game like appears to be pretty simple. 
there's usually a lot more that goes into it. So mm-hmm. I'm just super impressed by the fact that it was mostly done by one person. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I think Kayla is super talented, but also the rest of her team is very female and non-binary, which I think is also very, very cool for a video game because you don't see that a lot. Another couple things I really like, obviously, is how cozy this game is. Mm-hmm. You just sit back, you chill, you know, listen to the music, you fly around on your cool little glider just low stress <laughs> after playing Mega Man 2 last week <laughs> this is the opposite what are you because it's to say? also platforming but it's like chill platforming Mega Man 2 is low stress <laughs> for who <laughs> even you and Michael could stress out about it y'all played it five billion times <laughs> I actually did have that on my list too. Ease of play, coziness, and being low stress was what I had on mine. Because it was nice just like a Saturday or Sunday morning, sipping my coffee and playing this on the couch. Like was, it was perfect. Nice. And then I also like the the life lesson that it's going for, you know. That it's okay to be a failure. It's okay to (laughs) fail sometimes. Failing at one thing doesn't mean you're a failure in life, you know. Yeah. And no one was upset. You know, you're harder on yourself as the main character than any of the other characters are towards you. So, yeah. And that can definitely be know. true sometimes that you do tend to be harder on yourself. Oh, yeah. And I didn't expect the game to really have a theme. Me in either. It. So I think just it, it was like a nice lesson, you know, to be reminded of, but also was unexpected, which was kind of nice. Yeah. 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 And on that note, do we want to talk about what we thought might have been improved about the game? Sure. Yeah, I can go first. I thought maybe the game was a little bit too chill. <laughs> oh, I actually literally had that exact same thing. Because <laughs> it's maybe it a is little chill, chill, which I liked. But I think maybe it could use just a little few more exciting parts, you know, yeah. or yeah. a little more challenging platforming things. But well, I don't hate the game because of it or anything. <laughs> yeah, I didn't think it was a bad game. I just, for me personally, it might, yeah, it's just a little bit too chill, I think. I think I would have wanted more challenges with actually like delivering letters. All the side challenges were fun, but it did get kind of hard to keep up with Mm -hmm. who I was supposed to be going to and what I was supposed to be doing, even though you can pull it up in the little notebook. But I had a hard time. I just ended up wandering around until I found someone. And I was like, do I need to give something to you? Okay, here you go. Yeah, Yeah. same. (laughs) So that part was just a little bit hard to keep up with because they they show you on the screen how many things you have to deliver and the picture of who you need to deliver it to. But that's all you get. And so then I'm like, I had like two whole columns mm-hmm. of letters to deliver. And I was like, oh, God, I got so much to do. And I don't know what. Like, I know. And at that I point, you're like, I'll just talk to everybody. No, that, that's because it's got to be like, you know, they probably have a letter they need to get. Yeah, that's why I just like, here's a person. Did I need to give you something? And I just walk up and talk to them. I mean, what's the yeah. worst can ha- that yeah. can happen? You they give you another challenge. Yeah. And you're like, no, I haven't done any of these you're other like, ones I'm, yet. I am overwhelmed. So this is my first day, sir. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah. I like the people that try to like I know we already talked about the likes but I like the people that try to just get you to deliver a verbal message yeah <laughs> like that's not how the post office works yeah <laughs> they're like take this letter to my mom or I mean, not letter but this picture I drew to my mom yeah. I'm like okay <laughs> all right I'll do that it was manageable without a map but you really did have to just remember where characters mm-hmm. were yeah. or wander around until you found whoever it was that you needed. So, and there were so many other characters that it probably would have been nice to have some kind of idea of where they were. Yeah. Even if there's not like a mini map directly Mm -hmm. in the corner, like maybe if you open up your notebook or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or say kind of where they were. Yeah. Yeah. Just to remind you. Just to get an idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I definitely want to. I kind of get why they didn't do it. Cause like the game really would be super fast to beat if you had a map. (laughs) Yeah. So they were probably trying to make it be a little bit longer, but yeah. Yeah. Because I have, like, the game is short, and it's $20. So $20 isn't that much, but if it only takes you two hours to beat, you know, that's like $10 an hour. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I would wait till the game goes on sale, probably, to buy it. Mm-hmm. Like, Yeah, I know. agree with that. So uh, since Mail Time is pretty much a pure platformer, it really could have benefited from a few more platforming mechanics. Like, you have jumping, gliding, and, like, you kind of a, a little bit of a double jump whenever you open mm-hmm. up your glider Mm -hmm. but yeah i just feel like there could have been like a grappling hook or a climbing mechanic or a Mm -hmm. swinging mechanic or just some other way to transverse this world in a fun way Uh, it could have benefited from something Mm -hmm. like that yeah yeah i agree and this is her first game so i think there's like definitely room 
to take what she did in this one and like you know mm-hmm. add some stuff to it oh yeah definitely I don't know about you, Brittany, but for us, the game was like a little glitchy. Like, did it ever yeah, glitch up on you? that did happen to me. Yeah. I had to turn it off and on a, like mm-hmm. twi- two or three times. Yeah, it would just get stuck on like yeah. you would get a badge or mm-hmm. whatever. And it would like, it just wouldn't go away mm-hmm. no matter what you did. Yeah, yeah. You could, or you couldn't, You, I would walk up to a character to talk to them and then you couldn't get away from them. Mm-hmm. You just had to keep going through the dialogue over and over. Uh, yeah, yeah, that happened, yeah that happened a few times. Yeah, so... But it wasn't enough where it was really frustrating, mm-hmm. but it did happen a few times. Yeah. yeah. And you just close the game out and then mm-hmm. open it back up and that would fix it. But, you know, that could be fixed. <laughs> yeah. Do we have anything else that yeah. we didn't like? So you have a bee that kind of hangs out with you and follows you around? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I want some bee mechanics. <laughs> I want yeah. I want to be able to do stuff with that bee. I want to be able to send that bee over there to hit the a bee. button. Yeah. What? You didn't even notice the I bee. Did not He's with you the, the entire time. He's with you the entire time. <laughs> yeah. I'm not observant. And I don't think that he you, you talk to the bee or acknowledge the bee the entire time. Unless I don't remember. You until might, the very until end. Until the very end when yeah. you see Greg, don't you? Yeah. And then you're like, then she turns. you turn and talk to bee, but... <laughs> That's the only time that B has a real okay. part in this story. Uh, okay, I, I kind of remember now. <laughs> yeah. yeah, more more B mechanics, please. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I want to I want to ride that B like a pony. <laughs> oh gosh, <laughs> you're too okay. big. No, never yeah. mind. I'll cut that last part. Yeah. <laughs> Something else I had was at the end when you get to the party, there is a lot of dialogue. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. It is yeah. a lot. So I did find myself towards the end, like, okay, like kind of skipping through <laughs> okay, right, guys, at the yeah, end. Because like, it was, you yeah. go back and talk to almost every character and mm-hmm. it's yeah. multiple lines of dialogue. So at the end, when you're like, okay, I found Greg, now what? I'm back at this party <laughs> and I got to read all this. So it, it did get to be kind of a lot of dialogue at the very end. Yeah. But, yeah. yeah. I don't even think I talked to everybody. I was just like, okay, yeah. I'm done. <laughs> yeah. I partied out. What else you got, Eric? Um, I just have one more. This game needs like uh, progressive items. So what that is, is basically, you know, like something that would maybe like you pick up, you find an item at some point that like lowers the rate that you fall when you're gliding or mm-hmm. gives you a bigger boost on your double jump or something. Oh, okay. Just like so, a way to yeah, improve just, your skills. Yeah. Just something it. to make the platforming easier as you go oh, okay. and gives, and gives you like kind of goals to work for, or like, Oh, if I can get this item, it, it will let me get to this area or mm-hmm. something like that. I feel like it could have used like some progressive items. Yeah. Even if they're just like subtly like, Hey, this just lets you glide a little bit longer or yeah, it slows your descent more or something like that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. I think that's all mm-hmm. I got. That's yeah. all I had too. That's yeah. all I got. <laughs> now we can talk about strategy because this is a very strategy, <laughs> it's very strategy. heavy game. Really, really heavy. I mean, you really have to think about every move you make. <laughs> um, I still need to learn how to do that glit notebook glitch where you can just kind of like <laughs> yeah. warp yeah, yourself. I'm not good at doing glitches. <laughs> For me, for strategy, I literally put, it's hard to have a strategy in this game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because <laughs> when you play it's it like the first all time. all stuff you can say is just like obvious. Yeah. You know? yeah. I mean, try to remember where people exactly. are. Exactly. I have that. <laughs> yeah. That's that's yeah. what I put. Like, because you don't really have any way for it to guide you where anyone is, you got to really pay attention to where that character is in the world and yeah. you need to get back to them. I feel like once you've kind of made the loop like once or twice you kind of like get an idea Mm -hmm. you you start to get familiar at that point so yeah like maybe about half an hour an hour into Mm -hmm. the game you start to get a better idea without the mini map or anything yeah it tests your brain i guess it's Mm -hmm. not that bad we're so used to like gps and having a map and we never have to remember directions so and then like in every other game i have a map so i guess it's kind of good to force yourself to remember things every now and then (laughs) Yeah, and then it's like, talk to everybody, mm-hmm. which is, that's just the game. That's what you so, do. Um, yes, yeah, that's how you play the game. And yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I put, too, like, what I started to get into as I played was try not to become distracted by every other person. And, like, if you have a task that you have to take to a certain character, go find that character first. Try to complete that mission before you start talking to other characters. <laughs> because then you will avoid being like me and having 
like a 40 million letters, letters yeah. to do. You don't like to, to have deliver. like 20 items on yeah, your Yeah, no, I don't like that. I want it to be clean and empty. <laughs> so just take that immediately to the character you need to find and then go find somebody yeah. else. Yeah. It takes the cozy out of cozy games when it you does. feel stressed out because you have like 40 letters to deliver. <laughs> yeah. As stressed as you can I mean, be in this stress game. Stress is, is a relative yeah. term. I was not stressed <laughs> playing this game, but yeah. I have like... A pretty big piece of advice is to make sure you do everything you want to do before you go visit Greg. Because once you visit Greg, the game sort of stops and Mm -hmm. moves on to another section and you can't go back and deliver any more letters. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. yeah. I have one. (laughs) Have fun. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Have fun. Some items won't appear in the world until after you've triggered their existence through like dialogue trees. Mm -hmm. Like once you talk to Toph about mushrooms, then mushroom samples will start showing up on mm -hmm. the mushrooms. So if you're looking for stuff, it's usually better to go ahead and have the conversations with people and then start looking for stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Speaking of the mushrooms, I forgot to say that. I did like that you could collect the mushroom samples too. Yeah. yeah. And change change your your hat. hat. I did like that too. Yeah. (laughs) I feel like the it's game the could have used a few more collectible items like that yeah, that would like, I, affect your appearance or something. Or maybe you could get like a new glider or like yeah. fairy Ooh. wings or something. Yeah. Something like that would have been cool to have in there because that part was mm-hmm. fun going and changing your hat out. But that's like the only part of the game that gives you any anything like that. Yeah. yeah. All right. That's all I got. Mm-hmm. You guys got anything for future? No. Mm-mm. I tried to see if Kayla and her team was making a new game, but... This one just came out, so yeah. if they are making a new game, it's probably not very far along. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Probably not. But yeah, so I couldn't really find anything except they're making a mail time movie. I'm just kidding. What? Oh <laughs> my Netflix God. picked up the rights. I'm just to kidding. It. Oh my God. <laughs> That's the running joke. Because <laughs> yeah. a lot of times people will buy the rights yeah. to make a movie or a TV show, no matter what the game is, <laughs> even if there's no story whatsoever. <laughs> I, I did find in, on one of Kayla's profiles that she said that once she finishes making mail time, she would be taking a nap and then starting work on her next game. So since this game is done, she's either napping or mm-hmm. working oh, on her next yeah. game. She's she probably, is Greg. Yeah, she's Greg. She's <laughs> she probably is. still napping. I hope she's still spring. Napping. Go yeah. her. Go Kayla. Get, get your nap on. <laughs> I hope she went on a vacation at mm-hmm. least. Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> So, Brittany, are you wondering if we beat your challenge that you gave us? I am interested in if you beat my challenge. At the end, I had delivered 53 letters, which I felt was kind of an arbitrary number. Mm. And I tried to find, like, how many letters you could have delivered. Mm -hmm. And I was not successful with finding that information. So maybe you guys found it and I didn't. I delivered 52 letters. (gasps) So you got one more than I did. I beat you. All right. What about you, Nikki? (laughs) Okay. Well, confession. So I played a full I played I played the full game on my own except I didn't go to Greg because I was like, "Oh no, I got to do all these other letters like before I go to Greg." But then me and Eric started a new game that we played together mm-hmm. where we beat the whole entire thing together. Mm-hmm. Wait, so you never went back and finished your game? I never went back what? and finished my original game. But when <laughs> we played together, we only delivered like 36 letters. But I'm pretty sure I delivered more than that in my other game because I was doing like, I was trying to do all of it, all yeah. of the letters, but I didn't go back and finish my original <laughs> game. Yet. Well, you didn't deliver the most important letter, which was to Greg. Okay. But I did when we played together because... <laughs> You let me do the Greg part, remember? Because yeah. I was like, oh, I didn't do this on my game. So I did it in our game. So I still, I did it. Just like, <laughs> yeah, you okay. know. Yeah, all right. yeah. Excuses, excuses. But I'm, right. I'm going to wrap anyways. Because like, we didn't do it when we played our game together. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Plus we have a guest. We have Brittany. Yeah. So right. we got to wrap, right? All right? Yeah, let's all wrap. Yeah, Yay. let's all wrap. Let's do it. <laughs> I don't play many games, but when I do, I like them cozy. But when you play mail time, you get kind of nosy. Meeting lots of characters and hearing all their problems. Accepting their challenges and learning how to solve them. Flying over fields and bouncing on flowers. Delivering your letters and climbing tree towers. Cottagecore vibes got me feeling chill. Relaxing with my switch when I got time to kill. From down to Crystal Cave, all the way to Murky Swamp. Woodland down is popping, flower field is going off. Earn all your badges and deliver. 
deliver all your letters A low stress game, what on earth could be better? She, her, he, him, they, them, who can tell? Play mail time cause it's inclusive as hell Be exactly who you are but don't make me beg Somebody please tell me, where the fuck is Greg? I heard you been looking for Greg In hibernation, sleeping on the reg Right now I'm making a pie with nutmeg I'll come out if you really, really beg about to re-enter the town, gonna make my way down Go ahead, give me that crown, Greg's making his rounds Saying hey to these hounds, picking up coffee grounds No need for breakdowns, I'm post office bound Don't worry, scout, no need to act out Greg's now en route you're gonna earn that clout Chillin' in the van, thinking of a plan Starting off a male boy, wanna be a male man Not a fan of stunning lands, would rather glide than run in spans But Janet be a grand, damn up across the lands And standing up to male crimes, handing over cedars dimes Climbing up the mountain vines, learning all the gang signs Think I'll realign, get that fake check signed Watch my funds hit 29, and now I'm wearing Calvin Klein Shined up my glider, got shades and a visor The love spoon I'll hide her, be Kiki's insider Conspire to rewire all of Swamp's entire and exchange Greg's prior with a flyer from Ruff Snyder. Whoa, Brittany. <laughs> Nicki Minaj over there. <laughs> you trying to take my name? You're welcome, everybody. <laughs> yes. Yes, you're welcome. You can quit your teaching job and become a rapper now. I think Say you can, less. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, awesome. <laughs> So I'm excited to hear about the next game, which I assume you picked out. Nikki? I get to pick. Yes, I picked it. And you know what? There's a theme this season. And I don't know if you've noticed it, Eric. <laughs> but out of the, you know, five, six episodes we have this season already, hmm. what's a theme Ooh. that you can think about? Hmm. Like the first game we did was Twisted Metal 2. Oh, yeah, two. Yeah, two. And then we did The Evil Within, two. Mm. And then we did Mega Man, two. Yeah, we've done a lot of twos. Mm -hmm, we've done a lot of twos. And I'm going to keep it going because, you know, it's the season of twos. <laughs> so does that give you any hints, Eric? Hmm. <laughs> There's well, a lot of games that have a two. So <laughs> <any sequel. laughs> that doesn't really narrow it down. <laughs> I know what you're playing right now. Um, oh, Oh, you think I'm trying to trick you? Well, that's a two. You're playing a two right now. But two's not in the title. Two's not in the title, but it's still a two. Yeah. I'm playing Horizon Forbidden West. But yeah. that's not what I'm picking. That's not what you're picking. Okay. I'm picking a puzzle game Ooh, that um, I really love. Is it Peggle? Yes. Nice. Peggle yeah. two. Peggle two. <laughs> okay, yeah. But I'll probably just do the history of like all Peggle. Yeah. Um, but Peggle two is on the PlayStation, so we can get it. It's only twelve bucks. And your challenge is to complete 120 optional objectives. And if you do that, <laughs> you'll the get fuck, Nikki? <laughs> <laughs> it's not even the hardest one, okay? And if you do that, you'll get a trophy called Extreme Objectification Trophy. <laughs> <laughs> um, that sounds really hard. It's a puzzle game. You can do it. 120 objectives? Uh, optional objectives. Uh, optional <laughs> objectives. Yeah. So not even just the regular game. But that's game. not even the most amount you can get. I think the most amount you can get is like 190. So okay. I didn't make you do the whole amount. <laughs> I'm being very lenient <laughs> over here. It's fair. <laughs> Don't you agree, Brittany? I do. Yeah. All right. <laughs> this, I have no idea. So I guess I'll find out. I do love Peggle, though. Peggle's a great game. I do, too. So let's do it. All right. All right. Until next time. Bye. 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 As always, if you like this episode, please leave us a review on Apple Podcasts or rate us on Spotify. Also, check out our website, pressanybutton.net. We recently added Drink Man on there, so you can download that for free and play it. And uh, we'd love to hear what you have to say. Bye!